Okay, this question is to the mothers. Everybody else just work with us, okay? Do you still remember childbirth? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> Next question. Do you remember that it was painful? Yes. Okay. Last question. Are you still in pain now? No. That's how you know you have forgiven. You can remember the experience. You can remember that it was painful. And you're not in pain now. That's it. That's it. See, see, this is practical Christianity. I'm not trying to get up here and, and make you bend spoons. We're here to try to make your life work. So, so if you can get that, you can go forward. See, if you've really forgiven yourself, others, situations, mistakes, problems, you can have the memory without the pain, the memory without the anger, the memory without the fear, the memory without the frustration, the memory without the judgments. In the Course of Miracles it says, I am never upset for the reason I think. See, once you realize that your frustration with yourself and others has nothing to do with them and everything to do with how you think and how you perceive what's going on, you can create space for healing. I'm never upset for the reason I think. You could go off, go crazy. Somebody did this to me. They did this to my family. They did this to somebody I care about. That's never the reason why you're upset. You're upset because of the way you perceive what it, uh, is actually going on in front of you. And your perception is triggered and connected to emotions that when that thought gets pulled, it pulls that emotion with it. And a, a response is consistent with your character. Now, so what does this mean? It means once you realize that you give meaning to everything and everyone in your life, you can see that you made up a story to go along with the facts. And you think the facts are what happened, and that is an absolute lie. It's an absolute lie. Your story is not what happened. Now, I know you can come up here and give me evidence after evidence. That, no, no, no. They're facts, and then that's how you felt about it. And you think how you felt about something is what happened. No, it isn't. Mm. Trying to make this practical, y'all. Because if you get that you are giving it meaning, you and you alone have the ability to give it a what? New meaning. Joseph said after his brother sold him into slavery, he ended up uh, sold to Potiphar's house. They ended up in jail. And then after all of that, he ended up being the second after the Pharaoh in Egypt. He said to his siblings, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. That does not mean that God wanted him sold, left for dead, put in jail, uh, accused of uh, raping Potiphar's wife and all of that. That's ridiculous. God wouldn't have willed that on him. But Joseph chose to make it a blessing by naming it such, and you have the same ability. Once you realize that your past is projecting on your present and future, you can make closure with your past by getting the lesson and the blessing from it and stop sabotaging your future with the pain of your past. That's called self-fulfilling prophecy. Once you realize, and I want you to hear me, hear me, once you realize that you are already complete, already perfect, already whole, in God. You won't seek out of validation through people pleasing, seeking admiration, and accumulating stuff. You are the image and likeness of God, and no one can add or take anything from you. 
See, this is key. We many times don't realize our own wholeness. So we act in ways that's fragmented. So we think because we're not whole, we do things to get attention, to make people pay attention to us because we hurt. So we'll, we'll harm ourselves through behavior. We'll harm ourselves with substances. We'll even harm ourselves with the food that keeps us alive by overindulging. We'll harm ourselves by pushing away the people who love us. Why? Because we don't know our own wholeness. We have to forgive ourselves and realize that God loves me just the way that I am. There's nothing that anyone could add to me. And I know that the Bible says the two be must become one, but believe me when I tell you, math all over the universe says one plus one <laughs> equals two. And if you leave, I'm still one. <laughs> now, let me keep it moving. Look, one plus one is two everywhere. Two apples, two oranges, two cars, two houses. One plus one is two. <laughs> yeah. Once you realize you are the image likeness of God, that you are a spiritual being, you'll stop hurting yourself and stop allowing others to harm you and use you. When you love and forgive yourself, you free yourself to be the perfect child of God that you were sent here to express. Once you realize that peace is always a choice, then you can continually make the choice for your peace and freedom. In life, you just can't take one bath or brush your teeth one time. Hopefully. <laughs> it's a process, right? We just read that forgiveness is a process. It is a process to, it is a process to maintain good hygiene. But the mind must keep good hygiene as well. Forgiveness is the process of transforming your context from bondage to freedom. Forgiveness is giving up the criticism, guilt, judgments, and gossip, and being love, peace, and harmony. As the Apostle Paul said in Galatians 6, 7, God is not mocked. Whatever man sows, so shall he reap. So when you realize that as I'm loving, as I'm forgiving, this is the energy that I'm sending out to the universe that's coming back to me, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Jesus said, as I close, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 1 to 6, do not judge so that you may not be judged. For with the judgment you make, you will be judged. And the measure you give will be measured, the, the measure you get. Why do you see the speck in your neighbor's eye but do not notice the log in your own eye? Or how can you say to your neighbor, let me take the speck out of your eye while the log is in your eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of our neighbor's eye, out of your neighbor's eye. But then he says something that most people, they don't continue to read it, because the next verse tells you how not to get in the situation in the first place. <laughs> do not give what is holy to dogs. And do not throw your pearls before swine, or they will trample them under your foot and turn and maul you. So if you know that you are love and you are peace and you are the loving expression, image likeness of God, don't give the treasure of you away to those who can't appreciate it. Remember that. You deserve to be treated with integrity, with love, with kindness, with compassion. You deserve that. So, as the quote says on here, and this is, we'll close it out. When I'm able to resist the temptation to judge others, I can see them as teachers of forgiveness in my life. Reminding me, see this is the key, because we have forgotten. Reminding me that I can only, only, only have peace of mind when I forgive rather than judge. 
So today, I'm going to remember that when you show up in my space in a way that I, that's inconsistent with what I believe, I'm going to be reminded that you're here to teach me the lesson that I need out of this, that I can stand before any pilot type situation, Pontius Pilate type experience and say, you can have no power over me unless it was given to you by my Father. We can stand in front of any situation and circumstance and know my kingdom is not of this world. We can stand before any situation and be the love of God in the experience, refusing to judge, refusing to criticize, refusing to be resigned that it can't be changed and know that when I love, when I forgive, I free myself and I free everybody else to be whoever they want to be because I'm free. God bless you.